Good morning, everyone. This is Sophia from Medas. So we'll be starting the session now. Before I start the session, this is a quick reminder regarding the last session. We have shared the video recording of the last session to all the engineers who have attended. And uh, you can check your email. Uh, the email box for your previous email when you record it, so that you can review it for your reference and we will also be sending today's video uh, today's second sessions recording to your email id and so that you can also refer yeah okay so that you can also refer it for your future reference for your modeling of curve girder psc curve girder right so yeah and let us start the session without wasting much of your time so, okay, uh, again I introduce myself, uh, I am Swapnil Agarwal and I am working in Midas IT from past one year and we will be taking this session today. I hope it will be informative and you will be learning something new. So, starting from this, so today's topic is as you can see, post tension curve box girder. Now, uh, usually when we have Curve box girder, there are many different things that needs to be considered starting from the modeling, application to tendon loads, tendon loss calculation, moving loads, and then design of curve girders, right? So there are torsional effects and other things. So just let's start the presentation and we'll also be checking in software how to do, how to model, uh, how to interpret results and design it. So that is the overview. So I'll just quickly show you the contents. So these are the contents. First, we'll be seeing an introduction to uh, curve bridges. Then we'll also be checking the modeling methodologies, what is available in the Midas software. Then we'll be checking the moving load application. As we all know, moving load is a very important part of the load application in bridges. So we'll be checking how to apply moving load for a curve bridge. As for the straight one, most of us have a very good idea about it. And finally, we will be seeing design as per the as to LRLP. I have not mentioned which according to which because we have a uh, we have many updates and you can design as per as to LRLP 16, 14, 12, 7. So you have different options. So it would be uh, dependent on the engineer which uh, if we want to check with old code, he can also check with old code or you can use the latest code as well. So yeah, let us start with the session. One more thing, uh, if I am going a little fast, just remind me we are the chat or questions uh, option so that I can slow it down and we can have a better system. So yeah. Starting with introduction, right? So what is a PSC curve bridge? So in PSC curve bridge, we have a very uh, different considerations to be taken care when modeling from a strain bridge. First of all, how do we model a curve bridge, right? Now, why is there a debate is because the curve bridges that we model in finite element is done using segments of straight linear elements, right? Due to which uh, there can be a difference in the results as it's nothing but a combination of linear segments. So, the debate comes at what should be the size of the this linear elements. Now, if I just show you an example, As it can be seen over here, this is a curve bridge that I have modeled. Uh, this is having two curves. And if I just show you, you can see all the segments, though it is on a curve, it is a, a combination of straight line segments. If I just zoom in, I'll just show you a zoom in part. And I'll just hide this section view. You can see it's a straight line. It's a straight line rather than a curve line. So this is how uh, we are going to model in any software how uh, a curve model in using beam elements. So what you are going to do is you are going to create a series of line segments which are small enough to represent a curve. So that is what the debate is. And then the effect of moving load. Right? What is this effect I am talking about is now, moving load for a curve bridge will follow the 
curvature of the bridge, right? So the load will move according to the lane. Now the uh, load position should be matching with the lane position. But sometimes that is difficult to take uh, in effect of. But in BIDAS, we provide the option of taking care the uh, difference in lane or the curve lane. As you can see over here, the loads are applied along the curve rather than the straight position. Here you can see it is applied along the curve. So that we are going to see how it can be done in civil. So today's software which we will be discussing is MIDAS civil, right? And the final is additional force events, right? Since the girder is curved, you will be, you, there will be a torsional force created due to the curvature of the bridge. So to check those forces, the design and those things will be also considered. So this is just a simple introduction to PSC curve bridges. And one more thing that when you are modeling curve bridges come into effect is the tendon losses that happens in the curvature. So even that is considered in mid civil and we will be seeing how it can be done. But the main parts remain, the modeling. Modeling is the most, uh, most important part that we are going to discuss that needs to be done in, in any field. Right? Analysis, once it is done, you can do it. Now coming to the different modeling methodologies in civil. Now the different modeling methodologies are either you can do manual modeling. What I mean by manual modeling is I create different nodes and elements and then create the my curve elements using straight, uh, straight different straight segments. I will be showing you in the software how to do this. That is but what I mean by manual modeling. You give the coordinates of your coordinates of your nodes and then you join it via element. Another different option is wizards. That is where Midas Civil has a strong point. It has several wizards that helps in modeling easily. So wizards is nothing but a smart template, right? What is this smart template is it provides you an option of directly giving the span information and then providing you with the uh, curvature and it will directly model it for you. So you have different segmental wizards that is ILM, FCM, MSS and what are these are? These are not, nothing but the different segmental construction stages that you use for making your model. So ILM is nothing but incrementing launching method, FCM fully cantilever based construction stage, MSS movable scaffolding method and FSM is fully scaffolding, fully scaffolding method. So these are the things that we are going to see. And the final is grillage model wizard. So we'll be checking this wizards how it can help us in modeling the curve bridge. Right. Now let us go to the software. So this is the final model. Let me just open a new file. So what I am going to do right now is I will be first explaining a few basic introduction to the software that is what are the different options available and then we will be quickly seeing the modeling of curve bridge like how easily it can be modeled and what are the things that needs to be kept in mind while modeling it. So if you have any questions you can ask in between the session we will be answering those. So this is a new file and I will be creating new. Yeah, so this is how you can see. Now in this particular new file, what this are the, as you can see at the top, we have different tabs available which are in recording to the modeling requirements. So you go from view, then node element, section properties and that's how it is. So it is pretty uh, intuitive and you can directly check on each tab for further information and what are the options available. Today we will not be focusing on much detail about these tabs. Today we will be focusing on modeling a curve bridge. Right? That is our goal. And so for that we will be first seeing the manual modeling, how easy it is to do in here. So what we will be doing is, let's suppose I want to create a curve bridge. Right? So what I will be doing is, let me first set the units over here at the bottom. So I will be keeping it at kilonewton meter. And let me create the nodes. First I will be creating at origin. 
then I'll be creating at my uh, mid of the curve girder. So let's say it is at 10 meters longitudinally and 15 meters. Just let me make changes. 10 and 3. And final is 20 comma G. Now why I have done this is I'll just show you in a minute. Now what I've created is I've created the three points of my curve bridge. That is the starting and the middle point and the end. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular option create line elements on curve. This will help me in creating this line elements on curve very easily. So you can see there are different options for creating this curve. You can create by three points or by center and three points. But today we'll be using arc by three points. So you can just select my three points. So I'll be here you can select what should be the number of segments. As I said, we are going to model a curve bridge or a curve segment by a combination or a combination of many different straight line segments. So greater the number of segments, more proper will be the division. So usually we keep it around uh, one meter difference so that the, the division is proper and the message is good enough for accurate results. So you can keep it around one meter and since it is around 10, we'll be keeping divisions as 10. I'll be selecting these three points uh, I'll be giving division as 20 since overall. So I'll be selecting these three points. You can see and now the divisions are created. So that's how easily you can create a curve model in this. You just have to give the coordinates or the basic key coordinates that you would require. And then you can create this curve elements directly as you can see from the top. The curvature is maintained. Curve, curved elements by just providing the number of segments that you want. You want to make it more finer, the results will be even better. The curvature will be more properly taken care of. So if I just change it and let me have more number of divisions. Let's say I have 40 divisions and I have same coordinates. Now you can see the curvature is more properly so. So that is how, that's the benefit of having more number of divisions. Uh, you can improve the model accuracy by having a number, higher number of division. That is the goal of it while doing manual modeling. Right? So you need just the key points and then you can use this node and element option to create. Now this was if you are going for manual modeling. Right? Now let me just show you if we use wizards. So wizards are nothing but as I can show you over here. This is the different wizards and the structure tab which you have. Here you have different options such as ILM which is the incremental launching method, FCM, MSS, Gillage and FS. I'll just show you one single wizard and the process remains same for other wizards as well. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, to be better I'll just show you two different wizards so that it will be easier for you to remember and understand. Starting with incremental launching method. Just a minute. Here you can see this is the input that it requires. So incrementing launching method as you know it is a method where you will be pushing your segments incremental wise and then you will be creating the bridge. Right. So here you will be inputting the element length. What is the different element length? Here you will be giving the radius, so in, you, here you can include the curvature of the bridge. So let us say 500 meter is my radius. You can give the concave or convexity of your uh, bridge and then it will model accordingly for you. And these are the rest of the information for your boundary condition, what is the material and segment required. And the rest two options are for your tendon information. So here you can see you can select what type of bridge it is and you can provide your tendons. That is for incrementing launching method. 
Similarly, if we go for relish model, I'll just show you. This is for my relish model. Here you can see we have different options, span layout, span, section, transfer, load. So what are these different options? It's nothing but remain same. Layout means here you need to informate, info, uh, put your span information as you can see over here. You will be putting skew angle also, you can see in your curve bridge. And then you can give your uh, radius as you can see over here for your coverage. So you can give your radius, concave, convexity. And there's one interesting option available in Gilles Villa that is multi-curve. What I mean by multi-curve is here you can give not only the circular span information but also if you have any transition curve between your curve curvature of the bridge, if there is any straight segment of your uh, in the bridge, that can also be modeled if you have a uh, if you are using a village villa, right? So this makes the modeling very easy. You can directly put the different uh, your different layout information that is what is the curve starting point, transition curve starting point, circular curve starting and end point, radius. All this information can be inputted and the model will be generated. Right. So I'll be showing you quickly how to do that. So just give me a minute to open the file. see the screen right okay so if there are any questions till now in the modeling part how we can create the curve bridge or what is the minimum length that needs to be considered usually i recommend to go from span by 10 uh, no no span by 10 yeah one meter one meter is my usual recommendation that is if you keep the distance between your two uh, distance or uh, section length as one meter it is enough but again, it depends on the span information. So if you have a uh, smaller, smaller span, then going, uh, then you would have to have an even more finer span length, uh, section length. But if you have a larger span, then one meter suffices, right? So that is one uh, frequently asked question that what should be the span length or the section length for considering the curvature properly. So, yeah. Now, going on to the next thing, the visa, which I was talking about. Now, this is the base file or nothing, but here I've already, for saving time, I've already, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, I was having a little problem. Yeah, for saving time, we have already created the material and section properties. I'll be showing you one interesting feature that is in properties, material properties on add. Here you can directly select the uh, grade of concrete based on your code. Let's suppose I'm doing concrete and I want according to my ASTM ASTOS Reinforce Concrete Standards. So I can directly take from my database. As you can see, we already have predefined grade of concrete available, which are usually used. So we have from C3500, 5000, all these grades are available. So I can just select one particular grade, and you can see over here, the units are updated according, uh, the values are updated according. And then you just have to click on OK. And then you can see that particular grade of concrete is created. Now that is there for your uh, material properties. Similarly, you can create a steel material property as you can see over here. You also have an option for steel and like that you can also create for 
your user defined. Let's say you don't want to use any of the uh, database section properties or material properties. You can directly select the user defined given the modulus of elasticity and weight density as per your requirement. Now that is for your material properties. Now section property. So here we are going to define a PSC section, right? So in PSC section we will be using PSC box or we will be using PSC six cell depends. Here in this particular project or the model that we are going to use is having PSC six cell box. So I'll just show you how we can create. So you just have to go to add. Click on add. This particular dialog box will be opened. You can just go to PSC section. Here you can select what kind of PSC box section you have. And you will have this PSC viewer also available. And you can input this. You can check on or check off these parameters as per your input. So here you can see I have different joints in this PSC section that I want to model or not. I can check on or check off if I want. And then I have to input the various parameters as required. So I've created this model mod section previously itself as you can see over here in PSC section. So here I have already inputted the values. So this is my answer. So I'm having six cell PSC box section. Here you can see number of cell six. Height of each is H1 and I provided 2.75. Here different heights, slab height, the bottom girder. Uh, bottom flange height, web thickness, all this information is provided by here and you can see. So this is, as you can see in the viewer, this would be your final section, right? Now we'll be using this particular material and section properties to create our village model. So we'll go to structure, village model, right? And here one uh, one amazing or good feature about different wizards is you can save your any uh, input file that you are giving into the wizard for your future use. Let's say you are having two particular curve bridge model, uh, curve bridge projects that you are being currently working with and you have once created this particular wizard file for one of the model. And in another model there is only slight modifications and it would be easier if you could just import those files right those inputs so that can be done over here so here you have the save as option that helps you in saving the saving the file that you have created uh, saving the wizard file that you have created and then you will have an open file that will help you in opening those saved file so i'm just clicking on open here i've already created this file just a minute Right, so you can see I'm I'm modeling it as two at the rate forty. That means I'm having span two span bridge, which is a forty meter length. I'm even providing this Q length, as you can be seen. My radius is as per hundred meter, and I'm in convex. Right, so that is the information in my longitudinal or layout information for my bridge grid. Here you can see boundary I'm giving as integral type, and these are the abutment and pier sections I have provided. Now I'm giving, I uh, selected the section for my span and then I've provided my different, different transverse properties that is my, what is my, uh, what is my crash barriers with, what is my median width, what is my carriage width, with, all those information is provided. Finally, I provide the load information such as myself, weight, pavement and the tendon information. As you can see over here. I provided the tendon information, how it's created, and the reinforcement. So this is regarding your modeling, right? If I just so I'll again repeat how we are going to create a wizard file or how we are going to do. First of all, we'll just have to go to structure, select village model wizard file, and then you can directly select what kind of modeling you want, 2D, 3D. 2D is your frame type that is using your uh, line element and then you just have to provide your material span information skew angle and then the radius right what is the curvature of the bridge 
and you can just uh, after this you need to input other parameters for your girl such as your span section properties and uh, transverse uh, section details and your loading properties like if you just click on ok it will create the model for you so you can see from the top the curvature you can see there is this skew of 10 degrees maintained at the starting so that can also be done so it all depends how uh, what you want for the project you can directly change by just clicking on the parameters you don't have to model it as you can see you don't have to model it or calculate the known positions the software will automatically calculate those positions you just have to input the diameter uh, sorry the radius the curvature of the radius radius of curvature skew angle and you just have to click on it, right? So that's the one. That's a very good uh, feature that it provides. Now if I just show you in line element segment, you can see even the even the grillage modeling that has been done, that is the uh, transverse members have been very properly provided and you can see that forces transfer would be accurate. So this is a grillage model and if I just show you in 3D, you can see for my MCL box color also. Right? Any questions in this using the wizard? I'll just show you the tendon profiles as well that has been followed for my curve girder. You can see for my girder number one. Everyone can see the tendon profile, uh, the yellow color line. If I just hide it, it will be more clearly visible. This is my tendon profiles for the girders that I have provided. So you can directly provide even the tendon profiles. So any questions in this? For Sarah? Okay, clear. Uh, if I'm going little fast or anything is, uh, if there's any query, just let me know so that we can answer it. Uh, yeah, so moving on. That was regarding tendon profile, how you can provide and how to make uh, take the curvature into effect by using wizards. Right? So this covers our modeling aspect. Let's say we have completed the modeling and now we want to go for the loading part. I've done my stress weight modeling, uh, I have done, imported it from some, let's say AutoCAD or I've done in civil itself my modeling as I explained by two different methods, by your node and element or by your wizards. Now I want to create a my loads, right? So what are the different loads? Here all the static loads are already considered by wizard itself, such as self-weight, pavement load, barrier. If I just show you some of the loads, such as self barrier loads, you can see. Then I can even show you the self-weight loads, uh, my barrier loads, and the end. So all those wizards are even the median loads can be seen. All those loads are already considered by the software automatically. Now what we have to apply the final load is my moving load. And the tendon is also considered. So finally we will have to apply for moving load, right? So moving load, uh, what we can do is how to apply moving load, I'll just show you how we can do it here. And we'll, I'll also show you a one particular ASTO clause recommendation that needs to be followed. Uh, if you are modeling a continuous grid, since that is a very important clause and uh, it is hard and I'll show you how it is implemented in the software. Uh, I, I uh, for the substructure modeling there was a question there's a question here segment to be shorter and to have special geometry. Uh, I'll just show you like uh, in case when we are using the modeling part wizard here you can see just a minute here you can see you have this option of changing it so here I've already defined the section number three as sphere I can change the sphere section then I can provide the geometry that I want I can change the height of the pier as per the requirement so if I just show you and I change the section number three over here 
pure section properties. Let's say I don't want solid drum, I want some other section. For example, I have a solid track. Solid track is something like this. Let me provide the information. Let me provide H as 1 meter, B as point. Uh, HS point five and BS one meter, right? So that would be something nice. So I provided this, and I just click on OK. You can see over here my section shape has changed into solid track, right? So you can change or modify the section as per your geometry. You can also import a special geometry from AutoCAD as well. So you have this option, particular option, section property calculator, that helps you to import directly any file from AutoCAD and you can use it as a section file in civil. So if you have such a section, just let us know. We'll guide you how to do it. So don't worry about regarding the section, whether it can be. You can import those sections. If, uh, if it's not available in civil, you can import that section from your AutoCAD file. I'll just show you over here. As you can see, this is my uh, SPC tool over here, and I'll just import one particular um, you can go to model section and then there is an import option just a minute file import autocad dx i'll just open one dx file just please wait Yeah, so here you can see so it, I have one particular DXF file available here in D so and if I click on OK Just a minute. I think I have imported the ROM AutoCAD file. But yeah, you can import your AutoCAD file and then it can be modeled as per your section. So that feature is there. So you can, uh, you don't have to worry about your sex, uh, section that uh, if you have any special geometry that can be incorporated. I hope the question is clear for your substructure. Okay. Moving on to the load, right? So I was telling how to apply the moving load for your curve bridge. So if you just go to civil load, moving load, and here you just have to select ask to LRFD. So today we are going to focus on ask to LRFD. And here we can select the traffic line lay. Add. And we can just have, we just have to select the elements of the curve, right? And it will automatically the load will, the vehicle will follow along the curve. So you can just provide, let's say, lane one. Here, you can provide the wheel spacing that would be 1.8288 meters according to HL93. Here you can provide eccentricity. That is, what is the uh, eccentricity or the lane? Uh, what is the where is the location of your lane center from the reference line? So I'll be just selecting this by number. Let's say uh, I'll be just hiding it. Number you can see 41 to my 60. 41 to my 60 is the element on the curve. So I'll be inputting number as per element number. And I click on add. Right? You can see over here. And here also you need to input the start and end information. So let's say what is when is my span starting so that it will be helpful for lane support negative moment. I'll be explaining it in a little while. So I'll be giving 41, that is start of the span. Then again, it starts at 51. And I'll be clicking on OK. And so you can see over here, from the top view, my vehicle movement will be along the curve according to the lane. Yes, any doubt in this? How to define lanes? So that's a very simple process. You just have to select the elements. You just have to provide the vehicle spacing, eccentricity from both direction, 
let's say I want another lane which is at a center city from uh, let's say two meters from this defined reference line so I can just go to I can add another lane traffic line lane add eccentric lane I'll be selecting eccentricity as two meters I'll be giving number as 41 to 60 I'll be giving minus 2 because I want it to my left hand side as shown over here left is negative and I'll click on add and here again I'll add start information here and 51 and ok so you can see the eccentric lane is defined 2 meters from the starting point any questions so these are the uh, definitions one the interesting or important point for moving lane that I want to specify is here you can see we have a skew angle as well so if you want to consider so that is there right so skew angle is also present so if you want to consider the effect of skew angle or the movement you can select this cross beam option and here you can give your start and end skew as well so this particular option helps you in not only for straight bridges or only for curved bridges but also if you have curvature along with skew right so moving load can be applied even if there is a skew you can provide your skew angles and it will consider automatically finally is this cross beam distribution you just have to select cross all that is the structure element of your cross beams that is the transverse elements and you will have to select here I will be giving 10 I will be selecting ok so if I just show you display here you can see uh, now there is an eccentricity uh, skew of 10 degrees so that's how you can change or define your legs and I'll just show you what my cross all was cross all was my all the uh, transverse lanes right transverse elements so you can see over here cross alls are nothing but my transverse elements any questions regarding this moving lane definition no right ok moving on that is my moving lane now as I said it's a three step process first you have to define lane then vehicles and then moving load cases so vehicles you'll just go to vehicles here for ASTO you already have predefined vehicle loads you don't have to define the vehicle load so you can usually we use HL93 truck and HL93 tender so both are available as per your convenience you can directly select this particular truck and it will you just, it will get updated as per the code the uh, axle loads the spacing between axles and you just have to click on ok similarly for tandem you just have to select this particular standard tandem you can provide the dynamic allowance factor it is 33 percent you can just input that and click on ok so that's how you can define the vehicles right now I'm just showing you how to define and what are the things that needs to be considered and then we'll be doing it actually any questions till now or in that part yes someone has raised their hand uh, yes any question engineer Mohan Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be moving forward. So, what we were discussing is the moving lane and the vehicle definition. And finally, what we have is moving load cases. So, here we'll be just providing in moving load cases. We'll click on add and just a minute. We'll click moving load cases. And here you can see we just have to provide the load case name. Here we'll select the vehicle. The vehicle here you can see and the links that the vehicles will move on. So that's how you can provide the moving load definition. Now the very important part of ASTO clause that we, I was discussing is lane support negative movement. As all of your engineers are working on ASTO, you would be knowing the importance of it and how 
uh, how it is applied. So I like you to think about how you have been following or uh, trying to achieve the codal clause for that particular uh, clause. I'll just highlight that clause for your quick, quick recollection. Just give me a moment. And the clause is just a moment, right? Yes, I am talking about this particular clause. Now is there a clause number written over here? Yes, 3.6.1.3. I think that is the particular clause. So the clause states this particular thing. I will just zoom in for your uh, readability. And this is the clause which says that for both negative moment uh, at the interior pierce, that is if you have a continuous bridge system, you will be placing two truck girders, uh, or sorry, two trucks at a 50 minimum 50 feet distance between the lead axle of the one truck and the another's rear axle truck, and you will be reducing the effect by 90 percent, right? And a distance between two 32 kip axles will be taken as 14 feet. So this particular clause I like to uh, bring into your notice how it is implemented in civil and. If you, it will be easier for you to understand if you remember how you have been implementing this particular clause in your continuous bridge projects. So in civil you don't have to do much, you just have to add one particular one particular definition that is nothing but lane support negative moment. Yes, there is a question. Uh, okay, no question, clear. So if there's any question, you can ask me and I'll try to solve it. Uh, yeah, so what we were telling is the lane support negative moment. So as I already showed you, there's an ASTO clause which states we need lane support negative moment. You just have to play lane support negative moment here. And here you just, the software will automatically calculate the positions where this clause needs to be implement, implemented. You just need to select the girder groups. So you will be selecting your superstructure and you will click add. So that's how you are going to do. You just have to select the girder group and it will automatically calculate at which locations this particular clause needs to be implemented. Now moving on, that was your results or the application of moving loads. I will be showing you that uh, over here in this particular model for ease of understanding. Now in this particular model, which is a finished model, we have two curves, right? I'll be showing you the moving load lane that I've defined over here. You can see it is defined along the curve. And if I just show you the hidden thing, you can see this is the curve. Let me change the color so that it's easier to view. Yes, you can view uh, you can see there are different sections also, so I have differentiated based on the section of my girder. So you can see these are the support sections which are green in color. Then I have the tapered sections which are this one. So these are nothing but tapered sections and the mid sections are in white. Right, so you, you also have this particular feature for ease of understanding or seeing your sections. Now moving on. Here you have this particular section. Here I have defined the lane. So you can just go to uh, all the process as I mentioned before have been performed over here. Lanes have been defined, vehicle is defined, load case is defined and lane support negative movement. If I just show you, click on lane support negative movement display. Here you can see, here you can see the lane support negative movement has been applied. So I'll just show, show you. And you can see over here, all these red triangles are the uh, negative zone places where the uh, that particular clause will be implemented, right? So that is for a continuous bridge. Now we'll be just seeing the results. Let's say for we are seeing the results for my bending moment. I like to show. Let's see the sag at the center. Oh, in this particular place, I click on 
sorry, let me select beam forces and moments, particular center, and I'll just click on apply. So you can see over here, this is a moving load position for getting the maximum result at this particular location, right? So, and you can see it follows the curve. You don't have to worry about whether it is following a straight path or it is just a gradient. Actually, it follows the curve that we have provided in the link. You can see from the top, gives the much better idea. And that's how you can get the results. So here, you, uh, if I just show you, that was the result for your moving load positions. Now, finally, what we have is the design part, right? So today, your uh, main concern is how to model the curve bridges, how we can apply different moving loads in it for a curve type of bridge, and how to design using ASTO LRFD, right? So that is why we are all present over here. Let us see the design part. So the design part is, I'll just undo this. First of all, for design, we need to create load cases, right? Different load combinations. And that is a little bit tedious or a cumbersome process where you have to see what and all load cases to take, what loads to combine, what is the factor. Here we have made it easier by providing auto generation option. So you just go to complete design, auto generation. You just have to select the code. Here, as you can see, you just have to select the code for which you want the load cases to be generated. So I'll be selecting ASTO LRFD 16. If you want for previous codes, that also is available 12 and 7. I'll click on replace and I'll click on OK. So you can see over here, I have different load cases created. In the description, it is mentioned the type. Type it is the strength one. What is the factor it has applied? 1.75 for moving load, 1.25 for my dead load, as you can see over here, 1.5 for my SIDL. All this as per the codal guidelines has been provided. So you have the strength load cases, you have the serviceability load cases, and the fatigue load cases, right? So it has provided as per the codal guidelines, and you don't have to worry about the input. Now, once the load cases has been created. The final thing is design. So for PSC design, what are the things we need to do is, first of all, we need to create, select the code for which we want to design. As you can see over here, again, we have all the four different versions of code available that you want to design. So starting from master LRFD 7, 12, 14, and 16, all the four is available. So you can create as per your requirement. Now, once you do this, what you can do is, I'll be doing designing as for ASTRO LRFD 16. So I'll be selecting ASTRO LRFD 16. Here, I can just go to parameters. And here, you can see what are the different parameters that you can change or design as per. So, let's skip default for now. Flexible strength as per code. Exposure factor class 1. Tendon type and consistency. I'm doing output parameters, select all. I want to check the results for all type and I'll click on OK, right? Then we have design material. So here you can change the design material different from what you have used for analysis. So if you want to check for different design material rather than what you have performed for analysis, that can also be done. You just have to click on the material that's asked to yeah, ARS and I'll be just selecting C5000. You can see 5 inches, uh, 5 kips per KSI. Here, similarly for reinforcement, I can select to rate 60, sub reverse 60 and modify. So that's how you can perform or change the material for design if you don't want to use the same material which is there for analysis. Once this is done, you need to select the design position. So you can select for which positions you want your design to be done. I'll be selecting all elements and I'll click on OK. And output positions. So this is for which segments I want my results. So I've selected 41 and 60 because 41 and 60 are the locations where I have my, if I just show you bending moment diagram for my load case one, if I see maximum results and I show you in legend, 
as you can see over here my vending moment diagram it is maximum and if i just click on legend apply you can see my maximum occurs at element number 41 so i'll just show you where my element number 41 is and it is at the mid of my second span so that's where my maximum results are and if i just show you the minimum and you can see it occurs at element number 60 which is the second spans near support right as expected this is for the same uh, load case that we have C CLCB1 if I just show you that particular load case results load combinations so it has moving load, dead load, tendon forces and creep forces included So that is regarding your different forces and different load combinations. So you can select what location you want because uh, creating Excel report for all the locations may have uh, may take time. So you just create uh, the report for critical reasons and you can check where it is failing or pass. For submission purpose also it can be used. So you just go to design PSE, select the code parameters design material, output position. Here you can select the load case for your service security limit checks. As you know, ASTO recommends different uh, load cases for different service checks, limit one and limit three. So you can select it. If you have done auto generation, the software will automatically differentiate based on this, the load cases. And you just have to click on perform design. So while it is designing, I have created an already generated Excel report sheet. You can see over here, you can see at the bottom there are different checks that has been performed at construction stage, at different principal stresses, then tendon stresses checks are been there, and then for different elements. So you can see, first it will provide the different section properties that has been used for your element, what is the gross section, transform section, the material that is used, and the pre-stressing tendon information is also provided. Right. Now, the best part about this particular report that is generated is the codal loss that it implements. It also references. So you can see over here, not only does it perform codal checks, it also performs uh, the uh, inputs what particular codal uh, clause it is being referenced. I'll just highlight it for your reference. So you can see everywhere if it's using any codal clause, it just references it and you can see. So you can see the flexural resistance calculation, the minimum reinforcement calculation and uh, different moment for negative checks, all this has been carried out. So you can also see for flexible resistance, minimum reinforcement for negative forces and then finally the shear. Right? And as for curve, as I said, torsional will be a very governing, can be a governing force. So you have even for torsional checks available for this PSC section at the bottom torsional design for the section. So you can see different parameters that it has taken. Here you can see the equation that is used, uh, the values and the checks. Right? So for now our torsional checks are passing and the, even the crack checks are performed. So this is a uh, this is a report that I have generated for this particular bridge. Uh, if required I will be also sharing you uh, how to model this particular bridge uh, in your systems? You can get a trial license, and if you want to try out, maybe that can also be done. I can share you this tutorial file. Uh, let me show you what is a tutorial file that I'm talking about. So tutorial files are nothing but step-by-step -step guide that helps you in modeling this particular model easily, and you can then reference and have a. Uh, change it according to your particular model. Okay? So that is what the tutorial files are. I'll just show you. So this is our tutorial file is. Here you can see first the span information and in the end it will also provide you a step by step step by step step for what how to define everything. So you can see step one, step two, step three, step four. All this should be provided to you and you can directly create and then make some modifications if you want as per your project. And next time maybe we can have a, uh, if you have any queries, you can just mail it to us and we'll have a look into it, right? So I have added my mail ID here. 
just note it down swapmail.medasite.com or you can mail it to Pankaj and Pankaj will forward it to me or any technical person to guide you in the process right so uh, the support that you will get is is uh, always there you will not be facing problems that's it right so that was your report as you've seen design results for moving load that has been considered the envelope load cases and forces so if you have any queries let me know how to apply moving load whether they're querying that for the design consideration any questions or shall I continue okay no question there's a one question okay no question okay yeah let me continue then uh, as I was talking about design there was a one thing that um, I thought uh, you engineers would be interested in that is the reinforcement part till now what we have discussed is tendons we have discussed the section shapes we have discussed moving load we have discussed how to design but we have still not discussed the important part about concrete or PSC design that is reinforcements and that can also be provided if you just go to properties section manager and reinforcements so the reinforcements can be provided by just going to section manager reinforcements and here you can select for which cell which section you want to provide as you can see over here I have this particular let's say PSC uh, PSC sections so I'll just select this you can see this is my section on uh, this Right. This is my sections and here you can provide the reinforcement. So there are two particular options. You can provide the longitudinal reinforcement and you can provide the shear reinforcement. Right. So that is what we are going to do. Longitudinal and shear reinforcement can be provided. So the longitudinal reinforcement, how we are going to provide is we have different methods to provide this reinforcement. You can directly select the guideline or that is uh, the points that you want to start your longitudinal reinforcement let's say I want to start from my this point to this point I can just put it provide the number of reinforcements that I want let's say 10 I can select the bar size and maybe edge bar if I want and then I click on add quickly right so this is how you can provide the reinforcements in the sections the longitudinal reinforcements similarly for the bottom flank as well it can be provided and the well that is regarding your longitudinal reinforcement now let's move on to the shear reinforcement so shear reinforcement should have three uh, particular options diagonal reinforcement that is nothing but your stirrups then you have your torsional reinforcement so torsional reinforcement comes in two types that is one torsional reinforcement longitudinal steel that you provide and another torsional reinforcement which you provide it as stirrups so both these things can be provided differently based on what reinforcement you have in your drawings so that can be provided which would be considered for your torsional checks so as you know as I am already stating it again and again for curve which torsional forces may be high and it can govern the design providing torsional reinforcement would be important so that is there you can provide this particular reinforcements in your model and uh, then the design would be performed as per the provided reinforcements as well okay. so that was for your uh, design part regarding reinforcements how to design and what are the sections taken is there any questions so, uh, and I think we have covered the things required for today's session so we started with the discussion about PSC box girder, curve box girder uh, here we can see here we can see the different effects that we were talking about moving load effect along the curve line the additional force effects let me just show you the additional force effects as you can see this is my particular model let me act, let me just show you one particular girder 
I'll just activate this particular girder or maybe I'll even better I'll show you a single girder model for your easy reference. So this is my single girder model. I'll just show you MX which is my torsional moment and I'll click on apply and you can see the torsional moment generated in your model. So if I just show you the units, kilonewton meter. So it is quite high. Let me just show you in more readable terms. 1660 and 5286. So the values are quite high. Uh, the uh, torsional moment that is generated in your model. Right? So you can check those moments where it will design for different load combinations. You can check maximum moments and see it goes 2 to 5, 8. So that's how you can check the torsional moments in your model. For dead load, you can see results as per construction stages. I'll just show you for dead load. Okay, so these are the different results that can be viewed. And yeah, that's it for today's session. So we have covered what we are discussing, that is the girder modeling in uh, compared to straight bridges, how different it is, what are the considerations need to be taken, that is the divisions that is required. Then what is a, how to apply moving load on a curve line and the force effects, right? Then we went to modeling methodologies where we saw for a curve bridge uh, using different tools, manual modeling, and then we saw using wizards. Finally, we saw the moving load application along a curve line, and then we just went to the report, right? So finally, I'd like to end the session. Uh, if there's any questions, you can let, uh, let us know and uh, uh, you can mail us. Thank you, thank you.